Today we're going to be looking at redox reactions and chelates and how they're significant in our everyday lives. In this lab, we look at medical uses in the synthesis and analysis of, the mel of melanoma drugs, particularly copper diethyl dithiocarbamate, or CUDEDTC. First, let's talk about what a chelate is. A chelate is a chemical compound in the shape of a ring composed of a metal ion and one or more chelating agents, or multidentate ligands. A multidentate ligand behaves as an electron donor of two or more pairs of electrons, and the metal ion acts as an acceptor in turn. In such a reaction, called a complexation reaction, coordinate bonds are formed between the metal ion and the ligand or ligands. Complexes can take on different shapes, as seen here. Um, they uh, have different coordination numbers. Tetrahedral complexes and square planar complexes have te uh, coordination numbers of four. Um, and that just refers to the, um, the ligands attached to the central metal ion. Um, and octahedral complexes have coordination numbers of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, because the chelating agent is attached to a metal ion by several bonds, chelates tend to be more stable than uh, complexes formed with only monodentate ligands like water. So now that we know a little bit about chelating agents, let's look, about, let's look at chelating agents in the context of this lab specifically. Um, in this lab, DEDTC, which is present in the sodium diethyl dithiocarbonate, will be um, acting as the chelating agent. Um, we will do this by forming various solutions with DEDTC and um, various metal ions and these solutions will undergo complexation reactions and um, our chelating agent will essentially surround the metal ions. Um, this is what will happen when we add the metal ion copper to the DEDTC um, forming this desired CUDEDTC complex which is our melanoma fighting drug. Melanoma cells have abnormal redox regulation patterns. Tetraethyl thioram disulfide, or DSF, which is used as a drug to treat alcohol addictions, reacts with a number of redox active metals, such as copper too, which is what we use in this lab. Um, and when it's coupled with copper in melanoma cells, it induces apoptosis of the melanoma cell. Uh, this has been shown to be uh, a selectively done thing, wherein um, regular skin cells don't really uh, die because of the DSF copper um, combination. Um, the reason the melanoma cells are thought to die is uh, probably because they have trouble dealing with the oxidative stress. So in this lab, essentially, we will be synthesizing the CUDEDTC complex in a variety of ways. And to give you guys an idea of the different ways this will be done, um, in part A, we are going to react the sodium diethyl dithiocarbamate in a simple chelation with metal ions by taking advantage of a double displacement reaction. And in part B, we will add the copper to the DSF directly, taking advantage of the thermodynamically favorable redox reaction between the copper and the DSF. And in part C, um, which is probably the more complex um, version of synthesis, we'll be combining the DSF with anhydrous chloroform and iodine, which is going to yield a precipitate called BIT4. Um, this BIT4 will then be reacted with copper 1 and acetonitrile to produce, um, to produce the CUDETC complex that we desire. Um, the BIT4 essentially is just an oxidized version of DSF and it's thought to be an intermediate in the synthesis of DSF. Um, so one technique that you guys are going to have to master for this lab is adding solutions dropwise. Um, as my partner Carol is doing, um, you'll be doing this in parts A through C of the lab. Um, it must be done slowly and precipitate formation is generally immediate. And the precipitate that you see here is um, actually what we uh, see in part A. And um, as
as you can see, like MJ said, it's almost immediate. You see this cloudy stuff forming. And generally, your copper solutions are going to be turning this color. Um, another important uh, process that we, or technique that you have to learn is vacuum filtration, which is a technique used to separate solids from liquids. What we do is pour our solution through some kind of semi-permeable membrane, allowing the passage of the liquid and the collection of the solid. The vacuum helps the process to go along a little more quickly. You may have to scrape the side of the Erlenmeyer flask a little bit because there seems to be some solid on the side of it. And the liquid that is uh, left over in the other flask is called the filtrate. In part B, we do a qualitative analysis of our filtrate, or the liquid that is left over after the collection of the solid. We test for anions in the filtrate by adding various compounds of barium chloride, magnesium chloride, iron chloride, and sodium chloride. And if a precipitate forms, that means if it gets cloudy, the test is positive. This basically tells us if we have synthesized the DSF correctly. So in part D, we will be performing another type of qualitative analysis, um, which will involve creating a variety of absorption spectrums for the precipitates that we've created um, throughout parts A through C. And in order to do this, we'll of course be diluting these precipitates to um, concentrations that will be specified in the lab manual. Um, but basically, because we form a series of metal complexes throughout the lab, and metal comp complexes have really strong absorbances, we can then use the v UV VIS spectrometer um, to determine what wavelengths or yeah what wavelengths the absorbances peak at mm -hmm. and um, this type of data will give us information concerning like electron transfer um, we can also use this data to determine epsilon and um, th through Beer's law and by comparing the, these different epsilon values to a known standard um, it will help uh, indicate purity of the complexes that we have created and um, just tell us, give us a check on um, what we've done in the lab and whether things have been synthesized accurately. This gives us an idea of which method is the best one to use um, when synthesizing the cancer drugs. Um, from the Spartan we did, we know that copper and nickel form square, pla square planar complexes and that zinc forms tetrahedral complexes. This is due to the different kinds of electron transfers that occur in the formation of these complexes. We don't really need to go into details uh, about these transfers for the purposes of our experiments. Um, but we can use this data from the lab to see if it correlates with the shapes that um, we expect to see. And similarly, we know that the colors that we see are really the result of different electron excitations. Um, that they undergo when um, struck with photons. So we can expect different complexes to have different lambda maxes and um, thus different observed colors. And we can kind of use this data to check to make sure the colors and compounds are correctly associated and it just provides another accuracy check on um, the complexes that we synthesized. Well, um, we hope you enjoy, enjoy the, the lab. lab. Yeah. <laughs>